Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my first car review video. Um, it's cold out, I'm having a, having a cold, uh, so I'm wearing my red hat so you can still recognize me. So let me introduce this week's test car, it's the brand new Kia Niro. It's the PHEV version. The car is available as a hybrid, as a plug-in hybrid and as a full EV. It was the same for the previous model and that caused it to be the number one selling car over here in the Netherlands. So let's get up close and have a look. Um, Kia used to have the tiger nose grill, I believe it was called, and they stepped away from that and they now introduced it. it's called the tiger face front or something like that. I'll blink it in. Anyway, the front of new Kia Niro is entirely different from the outgoing model. I'll blink in the picture here in the screen so you can compare for yourself. Um, it's very classy and in comparison to the Kia Sportage which, which is introduced in the same year, this year, um, it's very different from the Sportage. The Sportage is quite wild. It, this has more of a classic look I must say. The headlights in here uh, have this very distinct uh, daytime running lights, it's which they call the heartbeat. It's reminiscent of the graph on a heartbeat monitor. Uh, this trim level has um, LED low beams, LED high beams. It doesn't have adaptive lights, uh, but it does have automatic lights with dim to low beam when there's oncoming traffic so you don't blind them. Now under the hood is something very interesting going on I want to show you first. Gas struts, I like that. Let's talk tag right now. It's a 1.6 turbocharged engine. Um, the electric engine is sandwiched in between the petrol engine and the transmission. It's a six-speed double-clutch transmission. Uh, shifts are seamless, uh, low temperatures, and when the battery is depleted, the car is running on the petrol engine alone. You can ever so slightly feel a shift, but when the battery is back charged, uh, the shifts are seamless. Um, the hybrid and plug-in hybrid have different power figures, of course this being the plug-in hybrid, it has a higher power rating I believe, it has 183 horsepower and in the area of 250 newton meters of torque. What's also very interesting is the Smart Stream technology that was developed by Hyundai and so Kia. What Smart Stream does, it's also called continuously variable valve duration. The cams and the camshafts aren't attached to each other. There's a small mechanism in between, but it does mean when the camshaft makes one full rotation, the cams make one full rotation. The only difference is with this me mechanism that connects the camshaft and the cams, you can either accelerate or decelerate the cams during one half of the rotation. So it means you can accelerate the cam when it's approaching the cam bucket or the rocker. And when it happens, when it accelerates, it quickly opens the valve and quickly releases it. So you have a very short valve duration. And the other half of that rotation, it accelerates so it gets in sync again with the camshaft itself. Now you can do the opposite too. You can have the cam decelerate when it approaches the cam bucket or the rocker. And that means you'll have a longer opening time. And once it closes the valve again, it accelerates to get in sync with the camshaft itself. It's a very interesting principle. And it really seems to work. It helps the efficiency of the engine. It can be either very fuel economic, uh, high efficiency, or it can deliver a lot of power. It also has cam facing, it has a turbocharger, so um, when you look at the engine control, it's very sophisticated and it really works in practice. Uh, the power delivery of this engine is good and the fuel economy fuel economy is very and good. When you have an up close look there's something very interesting going on and it tells you that's a brand new model in itself. It has anything to do with the C pillar. You can have the C pillar painted in a contrasting colors. You can get very interesting two-tone color schemes. But there's an opening here. It comes out here at the taillight. So there's some interesting aerodynamics going on here. So that also means that this isn't the actual seat pillar, it's behind here and when I tap this, I hope you can hear this, it's a plastic panel. 
So let me get you up close and show you what's going on there. So I have my camera handheld. Can you see? There's an opening in there. And it exits in here. We can have a peek through. Look, see. Well, let's step back a little. Let's have a look at the tail. So it's autumn at this moment and the roads are wet. But as you can see, the rear of the car is actually very clean. So the aerodynamics of this wind passage behind the C pillar uh, really do work in keeping the tail of the car clean so you have less drag on the rear of the car. So it really has a, an aerodynamic function and it seems to work very well. Now, talking about aerodynamics, as you can see, it's a five spoke design, but these spokes are really close. These are the only openings in the wheel. And it's also noticeable, these are only 16 inch wheels, so we have a high sidewall, and it really helps in comfort and smooth ride. And I really like this. I've seen, I've driven a lot of cars with 20, 21 inch wheels and really low sidewalls, and they're pain in behind for daily driving. I really like this. Now onto the rear of the car. This has this very distinct vertical tail lights with this interesting aerodynamics going on. Um, benefit of having this vertical tail lights is that you have a very wide trunk lid. Now let's open it up. You can see the indicators are here in the corners of the bumper. That has everything to do with legislation. You have wide boot. Here are my charge cables. Uh, the PHEV comes with a three-phase, five-meter charge cable and a, and a five-meter uh, single-phase charge cable. And under here, we pull it up. Yeah, you lose some cargo space in there because the PHEV model has a larger battery. So the floor of the trunk comes up a bit, but it's still very usable. And as you have seen, it has an electric trunk opener. It's nice to have, but I can live without. Now let's have a look inside the car. Another thing that Kia does really well are seats. Uh, I think they are very nice in bolstering size and adjustability. Uh, this car doesn't have electric adjustable seats, so it's all mechanical. But as things go, you adjust your seat once and you always keep it in the same position. That's, at least that's the way it goes for me and the missus. Um, doesn't have seat memory and I'm not sure it's available in this car. If it does, I'll blink it in the screen. But what I really do like about the seats that they are Better. They have firm bolsters, so the support is very good, but they use some kind of padding, so they're very soft to the touch. They're both comfortable and sporty. They offer enough support. So uh, steering wheel adjustment is also very great. It's again adjusted in depth and height, so um, it's easy to find a good driving position for many body types. So in this PHEV model, you get those pedals behind the steering wheels. Now currently my drive mode is in eco and in eco mode this pedals behind the steering wheel acts, act as the adjustment for the regeneration or recuperation for the electric motor and by pulling the minus pedal you can increase the uh, braking force on the electric motor. You can also keep it pulled towards you and then it goes in maximum uh, recuperation. When you switch the drive mode button to Sport, it only has two modes, either Eco or Sport. Now we're in Sport, and now you can use these pedals as the shift pedals for the automatic six-speed double clutch transmission, which is very nice. It's a nice detail. But this car is by no means sporty, nor does it pretend to be, so I'd rather keep it in Eco mode. Okay, let's hop in the back. Check the space in the rear so I must say it's very roomy in here as you can see I have plenty of leg room, knee room here headroom is very high they made a cut out in the roof so when you're tall you can have a good seat in here I'm 175 
I'll blink in the American translation in screen. So I'm not the tallest, but I can think most people can have a good seat in here. Um, depth of the seat is good and the rake of the back seat back is, is very good. Yeah, it's a nice place to be. And I must say our 15 year old who's already taller than me, taller than me, can have a good seat uh, too. What's interesting to note that the seat backs of the front seat are these plastic panels with this integrated well, sort of cloth hanger. I like that. It's a very interesting design. Never seen that before. And also there are USB outlets. I think these these are USB-C outlets for charging. So very good to have when you're traveling with kids. Oh, yeah. And there are these holders for comic books and what have you not. There's an armrest with cup holders. No heated seats here in the back, but that's okay. There is an outlet for the heating and I must say the heating, interior heating of this car works very well. So what do you say? Uh, let's go for a drive. Okay folks, let's go for a drive. All right, ready, set and go. Um, let me adjust the heat, so this I switch to climate control, can adjust the temperature, I've set it to driver only, so the interior heating focuses on the driver only, it's for efficiency reasons, and now it's toggled back to the infotainment buttons. Um, let's switch on the heated seats, heated steering wheel, drive, I like this rotary knob, the Ionic 5 I drove last year had the transmission selection knob here on the steering column and I could not get used to that. It was very annoying, especially when you were maneuvering or parking into a parking spot. It's a very large car, so even though it had an around view monitor, um, I took one or two attempts to get in a, into cramped parking spots and that selection lever on the steering column I didn't like it. I like this much better. In the center is a P button, so when you press that at standstill, it parks cars in neutral and you're ready to leave the car, switch it off, of course. So, car always starts off in EV mode until the battery is depleted, then it switches to hybrid mode. You can also use the EV button here on the center console to select. Um, now it's in auto mode, it's by default in auto mode, but it starts off in EV. Now I'm in hybrid mode and now I'm back in EV mode. And let's keep it in EV mode because I like the quiet ride of this car. As I pointed out when I showed you the exterior, it only has 16 inch rims with high sidewall tires and they really aid uh, in keeping the tire noises down and they really aid in creating a comfortable ride, which it has. I have a small speed bump over here, and I always joke that we have more speed bumps here in the Netherlands than the Alp. Alps have mountain peaks. And I really think that's true if you start to count it. And I really like the suspension setup of this car. Slow down a bit. Especially the suspension setup for the rear axle, um, soft sprung, soft damped, but it doesn't have too much rebound. I really like that. So it's interesting to know that the electric motor is sandwiched in between the combustion engine and the six speed automatic gearbox. That also means when it's driving in EV mode, the gearbox has to shift, but it's, like I said, it's very seamless. So let's go on to the highway, where we can't drive very fast today. By day we have a speed limit of 100 kilometers an hour. Let's see if you can hear the beep. 
when it says that highway drive assist is available on the on-ramp right now speeding up cruise is set to 100 kilometers an hour and there it is it didn't beep but it shows highway drive assist is available and it's only available on highways and there's a small nav symbol and what I think nav means is that it keeps in account speed limits when it, there was a speed limit it just to the speed limit or when you approach a roundabout the car automatically slows down I'm not sure if it automatically slows down the Nissan Aria I test drove before this car had a very advanced uh, adaptive cruise control and driver aid system so even when you were not using the navigation you're just driving on cruise control a very sophisticated cruise control it would always automatically slow down when you approach traffic lights or crossing or a roundabout um, this Kia doesn't do that but what it does do is warn you when you approach uh, a traffic signs or a crossing or a roundabout for that matter and it tells you here in the lower part of the screen to coast so meaning you have to take up the foot from the pedal and let a car roll and decrease speed so what I haven't discussed is the audio system uh, this car comes equipped with a Harman Kardon audio system and let's get it to the setup um, it's a very good system for background music and for talk radio it's very clear it's very bright but it can be a bit too bright you can see i have the equalizer the bass set to plus five and the mid to minus one and treble to minus two because it's it's very it's high let's say that it lacks in the bass department so to speak but overall i like it and i'm the kind of guy that when radio doesn't interest me interest me I keep it out and enjoy the silence so let's finish off this driving segment by telling a little bit about the screens and the infotainment as you've seen there's a lot of technology going on um, just shows you the highway driver assist the adaptive cruise control in the advanced driver assist systems and they work very well it goes for a lot of car but for this price point I think Kia and Hyundai are doing the best, best in class. I can only speak for the Japanese and Korean brands because they're the, uh, the only cars I test drive. Just happens to be my hobby and that's what my website is focused on, so that is what it is. What I wanted to say with this segment is there's an awful lot of technology in this car and it works really, really well. And the way Kia has incorporated in this car uh, how easy it is to use and get in drive off and it's like you've always been driving this car like you've been driving a car for years and years so that's what they do really really well Ooh, folks it's cold out let me keep my hands in my pocket so with this we come to the end of my test drive with the Kia Niro PHEV a car I really like for several reasons so let's hop inside and wrap this video up so what do i think about this car well to me it's important what you think of this car and you got you have gotten a good impression from it from watching this video so let me know down below in the comments as i said i recently watched an episode of autoline one network where they said that phevs don't work they have the technical infrastructure of both an ev and an internal combustion car and that in practice in the reality uh, it doesn't work um, i disagree with that whether or not a phev works depends on where you live if you have a driveway or a parking spot in front of your house where you can charge a car i recommend you buy the phev over the hybrid car i can charge the car near to my house it's fully charged and i get great fuel economy i've been driving around two hours for this video and it's currently set to 3.6 liters per 100 kilometers fuel consumption and i think that's 
great. It's very great. Given the fact it's freezing out now, I'm using the interior heater, uh, steering wheel and heated seats. What I really like about this car, it doesn't pretend to be sporty. It's a great car for what it is. It's a great car as a family hauler. It's roomy, it's quiet, it's comfortable. There's a lot of technology that really works well. And if you don't use the technology, if you don't like the technology, it's not in your way, it's not distractive, it's not annoying by any means. Everything just works. So I hope you like watching this very first car review on this channel. I won't be working on Project LS400 much for the next few weeks. So to create, create some content, I thought, hey, let's give this a try with car videos. If I come across clumsy, bear with me, it's my very first. If you like watching this video, uh, please give me a like, consider subscribing to the channel, leave a comment if you have any questions. And well, let's wrap it up. Uh, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.